So boys and girls, this is the Motorola V360 and I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm talking about because I wasn't a huge Motorola fan nor do I know what this thing is all about. I just vaguely remember it and this form factor. Suffice it to say it's an important enough phone uh, given that Motorola had always tried to capitali capitalize on this, well, this clamshell design. So without any further ado, let's try to look at what this thing has to offer. At first glance, this is just a feature phone with a removable battery on the back and, uh, well, um, an opening chassis, as it were. And I'm just going to go right ahead and show you the insides of this phone, if I can manage to remove the battery, which is this one. Maybe somebody is looking for information on this type of battery and also on this type of phone. So here is the inside and, well, there's a SIM slot and not much else actually. Now there are bad news and there are worse news. Bad news is I don't know what I'm talking about. The worst news though is that this thing is not a functioning unit as you will plainly see because I can turn this thing right on and it turns on without any problem but it's blocked in the Vodafone network and for some reason it doesn't work with either SIM, be it Vodafone or a different one. I've tried and, well, sad to say something's wrong with the device itself, though it does make some nice noises when you press the buttons. <laughs> there we go. So anyway, I can talk about the construction and show you the general design fit and finish, which is not bad given that it's well plastic fantastic as I like to say all the way to the bank though it does have this interesting feature on the front which is an external display don't worry it's not a touch screen by any means so there's also a VGA camera here on the front but not really much else in terms of um, features there is a Bluetooth module or a Bluetooth connectivity rather, but no Wi-Fi and well, no SD expansion slot either, though you have a color screen and polyphonic sounds. Now this thing was supposed to have been all the rage back in the day before the Razer series came along. And really it was a home run for Motorola and I can see why. Since even from the dawn of the StarTac series, this clamshell uh, uh, form factor, well, it just uh, won over people, won people's hearts all over the place. It does close up with a bit of a clap or clack or I don't know what you call that sound. It's not particularly exciting, though it does really show a bit of quality in the construction. I don't know if you can flip it open. Yeah, I guess you could. And you could also close it with one, one hand. Yeah, and this thing is kind of addictive. But other than that, this is just a... Well, it's a branded uh, mobile network phone and uh, it doesn't really offer anything that spectacular, at least not to my mind. Now, granted us Europeans weren't that infatuated with this type of mobile phone, nor with the Motorola brand itself, though I must concede they won some, some margin when the Razer phone came along. In terms of uh, collecting value or quirk factor, well, this thing, mm, I, I don't know, I, I guess it would be representative of what Motorola was able to do 
back in the day, uh, considering that, uh, well, Razer and StarTAC uh, models, the V3, a good V3 or, um, well, a good StarTAC from the 1990s is quite expensive. This, I think, would be an alternative to the clamshell collectible in your, well, in your GSM collection, your mobile phone collection. Other than that, though, to my mind, there are no redeeming features, way too many buttons on the front and too much painted squeaky plastic all over the place. By the way, look at that, how easily this thing can bend and break if you're not careful. And as always, I collect and sometimes borrow weird, quirky and obsolete tech stuff like this V360 so you don't have to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.